Hello, how are you all doing today? I hope you've been enjoying the book, uh, and I hope you had a chance to uh, listen to what I had to say about the first two chapters and a little bit about uh, Borg uh, in general last week. And, uh, and this week really hits on one of those pieces I was mentioning about why I find Borg so fruitful to study, even though I don't necessarily agree with everything he has to say, uh, is that I think he uh, cuts to the heart of, uh, of the nature of who Jesus was and why he came. And uh, uh, in chapter 3, he talks a lot about what was most important to Jesus, what was most important uh, not, not beyond uh, his life to, uh, uh, to the cross and the empty tomb, uh, but in uh, his teaching and in, in the way that he lived and what he proclaimed about God. Uh, and I think the two things that Borg hit on um, are that, uh, that spirit, uh, that the spirit of God connecting with the spirit of God was central to his life uh, and that he saw uh, compassion as, um, as the core of who God was. Uh, you can use the word love and compassion almost interchangeably, uh, but Borg goes uh, into some detail to talk about precisely what he means uh, about compassion. Uh, he also uh, brings up the idea that if we are to follow uh, uh, God, if we are to proclaim ourselves as Christians, one of the most important things we do uh, is to imitate God. And so it's very important that we, um, that we really understand who we understand God to be. Uh, and that changes from uh, denomination uh, to denomination, from individual to individual. Uh, and I think that that's uh, one of the important things that, um, that Jesus was art articulating uh, in his time is one of the things that, uh, that Marcus Borg points out. Uh, for me, uh, what I've really, uh, really connected with is the idea that, um, that the essence of God is compassion. Um, uh, calm being with, as I, I talk to the children about, um, and passion um, uh, in the, the sense of the last days of Jesus means suffering, uh, but to feel with, compassion is, is feeling with, to, uh, uh, to really understand and to feel deeply uh, in our gut uh, what someone else is, is experiencing. And to me, that's sort of the essence of the, of the incarnation, that uh, Jesus came to be like us, to live the life that we lived, uh, to understand uh, that fully, what it was to be fully human and, and, and to experience that. And, um, and I love the idea of, uh, of compassion uh, coming from the, the word for womb, uh, from the Hebrew word for womb, because uh, unlike almost any other relationship, uh, uh, there is such a, uh, uh, an interwoven existence between uh, a mom and, and that child in her womb. And even outside of the womb, um, the, uh, the scraped knees and the wholeness of, uh, of that child's life will be felt uh, in, a, in a very, almost beyond uh, what the child feels um, uh, to, the, to, the, to the parent. So, uh, so I think that idea of compassion uh, being the word for womb uh, strikes me in a real visceral way. And, uh, is a beautiful way to think about God's love for us, uh, uh, that it's even beyond uh, what we might feel, but it is so that innately connected. Um, and, and one of the other things that Borg spends a good bit of time doing is uh, is explaining what, what may seem obvious. Yes, God is love. We've heard that uh, uh, time and time again, and Paul uh, certainly uses uh, the word love, and in that uh, love chapter, charity is the word uh, that's used for love. Um, uh, but but Jesus speaks uh, of, of, of the nature of God being compassion. And uh, if we imitate God, uh, we imitate uh, a God of compassion, if that's how we understand God. Um, but I think one of the, the real um, things that this book brings out is that that's not something to be taken for granted, that not everybody understood that that was the core nature of God. And I would say that's probably true to this day, that uh, for a lot of folks, it's the holiness of God or the power of God, or the authority of God um, uh, that, strikes, uh, that strikes people. And it doesn't mean the others aren't true, it's just sort of when you close your eyes um, and you envision, uh, you envision God, what comes to mind. And uh, when Jesus says at the very core, at the very truest aspect of it, uh, it, is, it is compassion. Uh, but at the time that Jesus was, was practicing and, and teaching and ministering, uh, I think it could be largely said that uh, that purity was uh, 
the most important identity that people associate with God, uh, that God was without blemish, that God was holy and that God was pure, uh, and uh, that the imitation of God was to be holy, uh, was to be pure, was to be clean, uh, was to be good. Uh, and, um, and the church really was focused on circling the wagons and keeping any element uh, that wasn't uh, clean, pure, holy outside of itself. Uh, and remember that uh, that there really was a corporate understanding of uh, of this identity. It wasn't just uh, how how is Ben going to live his life? How is he going to imitate uh, God? It was how do we collectively, as the as the church, uh, represent God? And and you know the idea of purity being the first and foremost uh, uh, identity that people had with God uh, changed dramatically the way that they uh, they ordered their their moral life. Uh, their ethic. Um, you know, if somebody were suffering, uh, they were uh, put outside the city so that, that that suffering, that disease, whatever that ailment was, um, didn't contaminate the whole. If someone was a notorious sinner, uh, they um, were put outside so that they didn't contaminate others, so they didn't talk others into, into being likewise. Um, if you were um, impure in any way, uh, if you were menstruating, you were not welcome in the church. If you were uh, uh, if your reputation had been sullied in any way, even if it was generationally sullied, uh, you wouldn't eat dinner with, uh, with folks who, who saw themselves as clean. Uh, and, you know, and there was somewhat of a caste system. If you were from the, um, the, the holy uh, uh, the, uh, tribes, the priestly tribe, the, uh, the lineage of, um, of, of Levi, uh, you were considered more holy even before you lived your life. Um, and those who were from a, uh, a family of less uh, of, of, of less acclaim uh, or less holiness uh, were, were seen to be less holy or less clean. And uh, in Jesus, uh, it's so fascinating to read the the, the Bible with this lens because you see it again and again and again um, the way that the Jesus pushes up against it against it. The parables take on new meaning and, and uh, Marcus Borg talks a little bit about the, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan that we understand differently uh, if we understand that the first two people who come by, uh, both, both, um, uh, both holy people, uh, uh, they don't stop and help. Um, the, the compassion uh, is superseded by purity that uh, they realized if they stopped uh, and they potentially uh, got blood on their hands, uh, it would impede their ability to go and do their priestly work that they were uh, heading to do. And so, um, and, and so because that was the primordial uh, virtue, the primordial identity of, of God that they were called to imitate in their, in their belief, uh, they felt caring for this person would violate that. Um, uh, and so uh, the Samaritan, who was uh, just by birth unclean, uh, the Samaritans, uh, not only did they believe s slightly differently, uh, they had a different uh, holiest of holy places. Uh, they are folks that during the exile uh, didn't leave and uh, often uh, married outside of, uh, of the tradition. And, and so that made them even more unclean. Uh, but they were also the sworn enemy uh, of, the, uh, of the Israelites. And so that this person, uh, who was deemed very unclean uh, would be the one who is lifted up as the neighbor, as the one who loves uh, the neighbor as himself, um, uh, is shocking and turns it upside down uh, because what Jesus is really trying to do is to refocus our attention uh, on the imitation of God as the imitation of the one who is compassion. Uh, and that's how we, uh, that's how we reveal that. Uh, even the, uh, the parable of um, uh, of God in the, the, the role of the, um, uh, of the woman uh, looking for that lost coin. Um, you know, a woman was deemed uh, unclean, and, and Mark Spore goes into great detail about the, uh, the, the ministry of women and the role of women uh, from the, 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 the woman who washed Jesus' feet um, with her hair and her tears uh, to, to all of the women at the, at the tomb, uh, to uh, all of the, the interactions. The Syrophoenician woman who was uh, both doubly uh, unclean and that she was not, um, she, she was not a, uh, an Israelite and that she was a woman. Uh, and, and she actually uh, called Jesus to task and changed Jesus' his, his mind in, in, in that particular story. Uh, but all the ways um, that the unclean uh, are, uh, are lifted up because... Uh, 
what is pure is their heart. Uh, and that's what Jesus says, uh, blessed are the pure in heart. Um, and you see so many times that that's turned uh, upside down. You also see in uh, the temple life that Jesus, uh, it just crushes Jesus, uh, that God who, who Jesus understands through his prayer, through his connection to the spirit, uh, through his relationship with God uh, as, uh, as fully compassion, as outstretched arms uh, would have folks that can't get within that embrace uh, because they didn't have means, uh, because of um, the exchange rate, uh, because of any other uh, thing that would put them outside of um, the temple. And so um, you see Jesus both in his uh, early ministry, uh, actually even way before his early ministry, when Jesus is presented in the temple and his parents have to give a uh, a substandard offering because they don't have enough money uh, to give the, the, the suitable offering um, uh, to Jesus turning over the, the, the tables outside of the temple, uh, to Jesus challenging uh, the folks who bring a coin out in the, uh, the temple as well, that, uh, that Jesus is again and again and again challenging uh, that the real nature of God is compassion uh, and that we are called to imitate that, not, not the purity or the cleanliness. Um, and it's also uh, experienced in, in the miracle stories, the, um, the story of the woman who's hemorrhaging, obviously unclean, uh, touching the, uh, uh, the hem of Jesus' garment and, and being healed, or Jesus uh, uh, healing the, the, the lepers and touching them, um, uh, or uh, uh, Jesus just uh, uh, really challenging a lot of basic assumptions uh, about who is uh, holy and who is inside God's embrace. And so, uh, so I think this is really one of the, the, the meaty uh, chapters in Borg that, that make reading him so worthwhile is that he turns that. And then he doesn't stop there. Uh, he asks us to, to think about how do we do that in our own world, in our own understanding, in our own faith? How do we uh, not necessarily imitate the God that, uh, that we believe God to be? Or do we believe God to be the God of compassion? Uh, and if so, uh, how does that um, how is that reflected in our in our larger politics? Uh, how is that reflected in the life of the church? Uh, are we uh, circling our wagons and keeping uh, other elements out, or are we uh, a full, rich embrace? And, and are we that in our individual lives, and, and more importantly, uh, in our corporate lives, um, as, as as we're corporately Christian? Uh, and how are we uh, how are we doing that, reflecting that uh, in our more public lives as, as citizens? Um, how does that reflect our decision making at, at each level of our lives? Uh, and, and that question shouldn't escape us, uh, and and should sit on us uh, uh, quite a bit. And I hope as you read the third chapter of uh, of the book that you also uh, sort of look for those. Uh, uh, those in the, the, the Gospels themselves, those stories about Jesus really, really challenging uh, the idea that, um, that the imitation of God, the faithfulness to God uh, is about purity and wholeness uh, and uh, cleanliness versus, uh, versus rending your heart, giving yourself over uh, uh, the transformation that comes from, um, from a pure heart and from giving your heart to God. Thank you, and I hope you all have a rich, rich conversation on Sunday and uh, uh, enjoy uh, reading the book. I, I, I certainly have. It's been a nice revisit for me. Thank you.